In this video, I make a diorama and tell you the good points and bad points of my newest tool, the Cheaty Tech X Plus 3. Stick around until the end of the video for a short story that I wrote as well. The folks over at Cheaty Tech sent me this printer to incorporate into my crafts, and I wanted to design a project that would put it to the test. The build volume is listed as 280 by 280 by 270 millimeters high, so that means I'm going to make something big. Speaking of big, this thing is massive. Get some help if you need it. Don't be a hero. The packaging protects everything really well in shipping, and the initial setup was clearly outlined on screen once you plug everything in. Full transparency here, they sent me the printer to keep for my shop, but they aren't paying me to make this video at all, and all of the opinions I share with you are my honest, unfiltered opinions and experiences from the past month or so printing on this machine. Once everything was set up, I printed the test benchy in just 17 minutes. That would normally take me over an hour on my other printer. But we didn't come here to print benchies, so let's hop into Blender and start the project design. I want to make a sci-fi corridor slash airlock looking room, and so I need some walls with a repeating pattern. I started with a basic shape and made details, keeping in mind that I need to be able to print it and also what orientation it's going to be printed in. The walls will be printed standing up just like this, so I made sure not to have any big overhangs that would require supports. And so most of the detail kind of hugs to the wall as much as possible, while still creating shadows and highlights. I also started with a wall that was much higher than what I needed. That way I could decide the height of the wall in the end, based on how much detail I ended up creating. As always, my plan started very small and just evolved as I went on. Alright, time for my first major print. This is nuts, it's estimated to take only 6 hours, that's crazy fast. It went okay, but there's an issue. I'll bring that up in a second. I went back into Blender and I angled the walls at about 5 degrees to enhance the shape of the room. And of course, that means the roof is going to be larger than my build plate. So now I have to work around that. I am, however, trying to plan ahead to how everything will be assembled and keying it all together for that step, which I have an awesome solution for. So here's what I'm going to do with the roof that's too big now. I cut it at a good spot and added some registration keys and holes so that I can print it in two parts. I'll export it and here we go again. This cutout shape in the build plate is inside of the advertised 280 by 280 millimeters. That's not great if you need the full size, but this is probably not going to ever happen to me again. What will happen though is the corner was lifting up on the right side again, which caused a huge failure overnight. This time I put glue stick all over the build plate, especially on the corners. And then I noticed two different issues. One, the model overshot the build plate when it was printing. And two, the front corner that was glued, uh, it's still warped, but it actually pulled the flex plate up with it. It turns out the issue was that I was using the auxiliary fan when I didn't need to be, and the front right corner was cooling faster than the rest. I went into the settings, I turned off the fan, fixed the issue, and the floor parts printed a lot better. And speaking of the subfloor, this is one of the parts that I didn't key together. So, for my next trick, a soldering iron. Yes, we're going to weld the parts together with heat. This is actually my first time trying this and it really works amazingly well when you have straight seams, especially with right angles. Just be sure to have good ventilation going. I have an extraction fan going in the room just to my left. Also, at this temperature it goes really quick, so be careful not to stop in one place for too long or you're going to end up with holes. Printing with more walls or perimeters would also help guard against that. It's starting to come together. I recently got some 3mm acrylic, so I thought I'd make a window. <laughs> I never knew cutting acrylic was so loud. And after lots of screaming from the acrylic, I had a glass panel for the back. 
Also, if you noticed, the floor doesn't exist yet. So back to Blender for three versions with lines that match end to end in any layout. Time for a race. I started the same panel on my X plus three and my old Neptune 3 Pro, and these print times speak for themselves. The X plus three is already done. Let's check in with the Neptune. Ooh, still working on 21%. It finished in a little over twice the time. And in my experience, the X plus three is about three times faster for general printing and PLA. Here are the three versions, and this is what I meant about lining up in different layouts. The panel lines started the same, and I just deleted different areas for each version. I left a little play in between the tiles to add a gap, so I'm going to insert some card here and then weld the first tile in place, making sure to keep it very square and straight. And then repeat, repeat, repeat. I flipped over the floor and welded them from the underside for strength as well. And I left some tiles free to be able to reveal what's underneath them for the diorama scene. It was finally time to prime. I used an automotive filler primer to help a little with hiding layer lines. Let's make a little robot while we wait for the primer to set up. This clear cap is the cover from a pepper grinder, so I thought it would be fun to design something to utilize this as a clear top. Back into Blender. and Cappy the Scuttlebot is born. I made these legs a couple weeks earlier for adding to Hot Wheels cars, and they worked perfectly for this too. I did some in FDM on the X Plus 3 that are very usable, but I decided that resin detail would be best for this diorama. You can download these legs for free from my Colt's 3D page, and this little gun is up there for free too. I made a bunch of the resin legs in all three of the different poses. Just a bit of super glue in each hole and I set the pose for the diorama. I wanted to be kind of crouching back with a front leg in the air. And with all the building and priming done, I just need to make the final element of the diorama. Kind of goopy slime rising up from the floor. I used a combination of clear plastic rods fishing line and small gnarled tree roots as a base, and I dripped some UV resin on, curing little by little. By holding the piece upside down, the drips cure as they're falling. And then when you flip it back over, it looks like they're defying gravity, which is exactly the effect I was looking for. I sprayed everything lightly with this transparent blue paint, and in the end I wish I had left it a bit more clear, but I think it looks good still. Now on to the painting and a short story that I wrote just for this diorama. Not life, no. That had long since passed from the Santiago. Motion had been detected aboard the derelict ship nonetheless. The freighter had gone missing four months prior, and it was rumored to be drifting in far orbit among asteroids and the other wreckage that ends up circling inhabited planets. Missing. Until right now. Beep. Bianca frowned at the monitor. There shouldn't be anything here. I just had a full systems diagnostic run before we left Caspin. Maybe it's a ghost, Tack said with a mocking grin. Joke or not, the thought of it gave her the creeps. They'd been far out past the rings for nearly a week now, and she was never able to get used to the stillness of space beyond the outer belt. That and coming across the Santiago wasn't on her list of things to do today. Beep. There it was again, the beep of the sensor array picking up non-mechanical movement from the abandoned vessel. Although abandoned wouldn't be the appropriate word to use. The crew is still missing and all but assumed dead. Why don't you send one of your scuttlebots over there to check it out, he said, only half joking this time. Why don't I send you over there? She muttered under her breath. I heard that, he quipped back. She got up and left the bridge. Growing up, Bianca had always felt more connected to machines than people. She was a competent mechanic and an even more competent tinkerer. Walking over to where she kept her creations and works in progress, the sensor array beeped again. Motion detected. Tack shouted down the corridor. Does this scanner not have a mute button? I keep thinking something's wrong. She rolled her eyes as she unpacked one of the bots. 
Something is wrong, she thought. Alright, Cappy, you're up. She collected the metallic crab-like creature from its charging dock and powered it on. It trilled three cheerful tones and followed her as she moved further down the corridor. Tack's ship, the Dakota, had been a military corvette in its former life, and he let Bianca tinker with it as she pleased. As long as she kept everything running smoothly, her creations were amusing to him, though he seldom understood how they worked. He was a skilled pilot, but it was more intuition than knowledge and understanding. During the height of the war, the demand for starship pilots was high, and as long as you passed your practicals, credential requirements were low. These adrenaline junkies with little to no formal training came to be known as cowboys, and Tack was a cowboy to his bones. But that is a story for another time, as is the story of how Bianca came to work on his ship. The sensor beeped again, when there was an audible displeasure from the bridge. A smile flashed across Bianca's face, and then quickly faded as she remembered the task at hand. The photon cannons and missile batteries of the Dakota had of course been removed before the refitting of the ship for civilian use. In place of the photon cannon now was something else entirely. It was a large rectangular machine with a seat for an operator on one side, in front of a small control panel. To a person unfamiliar, it wouldn't have been immediately clear what the function of the machine was, though it was clearly meant to be controlled by a human operator, and the far end of the contraption protruded through the starboard side of the hull. Bianca touched the side of the panel and there was a low hum, followed by whirring noises. The rectangular shape seemed to stretch itself long ways momentarily before breaking out into segmented sections, revealing more of its purpose, or at least its function. The seat raised itself off the floor panels and the section of flexible steel paneling directly in front of the now glowing control panel opened to reveal an empty compartment. Though there were no transparent panels in this part of the ship, the all-green status on the control board showed that a rectangular barrel had extended further out of the ship's hull. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, she said reassuringly to Cappy as she lifted him into the open compartment of the machine. She lowered the panel down with a clang and secured the locking bolt in place. Removing the headset from its hook, she took a seat in front of the control panel, navigated through a number of settings, and lowered the headset onto her head. It was more of a half-helmet with cables and hoses, integrating the user with the electronics of the machine. She felt the tether press firmly against the base of her neck, and a familiar tingle prickled across her scalp. Ready in there, Cappy? She said. Two short trills in the affirmative came through over the headset. Confirming visual ink, she flipped a switch on the side of the panel, and the screens in front of her eyes went black. She flipped another switch on the machine, and there was a low rumbling that brought the image of the Santiago slowly onto her screen. Link confirmed. Locked and live. Tack felt a small sway in the position of the ship to the port side, as the cannon shot Cappy across the expanse between the two ships. Did you hit it? He called across the ship. He knew Bianca had. She cared far too much for her bot to miss. He also knew that he couldn't hear him now that she was tethered. Bianca watched through Cappy's optical sensors as he traversed the side of the Santiago and breached the outer airlock. It was easier than expected. The safety stops were surely disabled, being without power for so long. Scan for movement. Filter minus mechanical. An overlay of a three-dimensional vector field appeared on the screens in the headset. All vectors in the immediate area glowed a stark white. Moving through the airlock and into the main corridor of the freighter, Bianca glimpsed a disturbance that registered orange-red in the vector field down some distance and to the left. Cappy moved towards the room as directed and crossed the main freight hold. Everything looked so... empty. Where was the cargo? Where were the loader carts? Where was the crew? She swallowed hard at this last thought. Surely they had died months ago. She thought about what Tack had said about ghosts just before, and felt even worse. Even though she wasn't physically aboard the Santiago, tethering had come a long way in the last decade. She directed Cappy to move towards the detected movement. When he got there, he was met with hard-locked blast doors. 
She peered into the lock but decided against trying to pick it. Cappy's legs weren't designed for finesse. <sighs> Why do they even have these things on freighters anymore? She grumbled to herself. Looks like we'll have to find our own way in there, Cappy. Searching the immediate area, she found a floor panel with some give and wrenched it up. <laughs> Geronimo, she thought as she plunged her bot into the mess of conduits and cables. Working his way through the crawl space, Cappy was now directly underneath the locked room. And with some more pushing and prodding, two panels of the room gave way. Though one opening was too narrow for Cappy to pass through. He climbed up onto the floor, and then Bianca saw what was there. Nothing. Well, not nothing. The room was empty, yes, but the surfaces of the walls, floors, and ceiling were coated in what looks like... rust. She punched in a call code to open a comm link with Tack on the bridge. Hey B, having fun out there? Came Tack's voice through the headset. There's nothing here, she said, annoyed. What do you mean, my sensors are busted? No, no... Cappy saw it too, from the airlock, but... She stopped. How old is the Santiago? It's rusting pretty badly in here. <laughs> rusting? They haven't used ferrous steel in ships' construction since before I was born. Bianca took a closer look at the rust on the floor panels, where Cappy had broken in. Analyze oxidation. Negative appeared the word on the screen in all caps. She frowned. Analyze organic. Negative. It flashed again. Tack, I'm not sure what this stuff is, but it's everywhere. I'm gonna collect a sample. Sure, sure, he said absently. Tack wasn't that interested in things that didn't go fast or make him money. Cappy scraped a bit of the red-brown substance off of the floor and suctioned it into his small storage compartment. Just then, there was another disturbance in the vector field, behind the bot. Startled, Bianca turned him around to see what was there. There, in the middle of her field of vision, was a small, bluish puddle of some liquid that she was sure hadn't been there before. She backed up instinctively. Tack. Her voice came out smaller than she expected. Tack, something is here. Yeah, wrangle that rust and get your butt back over here, he said dismissively. He was thumbing through last month's copy of Ship Shape. Suddenly, the puddle grew in size and was joined by several other puddles of the same viscous blue liquid. All at once, they started to rise up and move towards Cappy. Tack! She was shouting now. I d Her comms cut off. The screen went black. Sharp pain seared into her temples as she clutched involuntarily at the headset. There was a sharp hiss in her brain, like a shout and a whisper all at once. Who are you? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Patreon. Special thanks to Sensei level patron Adam and Scratch Builder level supporters Andrew Price. Spaghetti a la mode, Harker, Kitsch, Paul Bechtel, John Stamosification, and of course, Gamey Builds. You guys are amazing. And here we are. Here's my verdict on the Cheaty Tech X Plus 3. As far as PLA printing goes, I love this printer. It does everything my other printer does, and in a fraction of the time. I don't have any other filaments to test, and I only use PLA, but the printer also has a heated enclosure, making it possible to print ABS and other heat-sensitive, more engineering-grade materials. It also has Clipper if you're a more advanced printer user and want to dial in things using that interface. It's super solid, it has a larger-than-average build area, it's fast, the support is great, and for a heated Core XY machine, the price isn't too bad either. As for negatives, the spool holder is located on the back of the machine, which is incredibly annoying. It has a filament runout sensor, but the default setting is set to be off. I have no idea why that would be the case, but you have to turn it on from the menu. The screen also shows a nice preview of a model that you're going to print, but it's inconsistent and sometimes it doesn't show up at all. 
We also saw the issue of the printer going outside its own bounds. Chidi Support informed me that the x-axis is limited by using stepper motors rather than limit switches, so there is going to be some small variability side to side. And uh, the build plate also included the little cutout in its own footprint. Again, it's not the end of the world, but it is something to know. I'm going to post a link in the description where you can go check it out and get one of your own X plus 3 printers if this sounds like something that you'd like to buy. Again, they're not paying me to say this, and this is just what I think. So if you like what you see in this video, go check it out. Anyways, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the story. Tell me what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you on the next build.